This is Joe with Joe'sAstrophoto.com, and tonight we're going back to the Vail region so that we can try and capture an image of Pickering's Triangle. So the reason that I chose Pickering's Triangle for tonight's image is because while I was tuning my EQR6 Pro after I rebuilt it, I would send the mount over to M16. It's low in the sky for me, about as low as I can go with my observatory wall, and it's in the southern part of the sky. So it's perfect for doing a calibration and then running a guide assist afterward. But then after that, in order to test my settings, I would slew the scope up to Pickering's Triangle. It was up close to the zenith and that fit my needs well too. And while I was trying to tune this up, I kept going back and forth and back and forth. Well, when I first started, I really didn't know what I was doing as far as tuning this goes. So it did take me three or four good nights of, of tuning this in um, now it's guiding great by the way i'm, I'm getting uh, in between 0.3 and 0.4 almost all the time and I, I still haven't even done the pet curve yet but anyway the what i noticed was is that after these four nights i had about 30 hours of data on pickering's triangle and i thought man this is a lot of data just to go to waste but i had it all over the place i had some at five minute subs i had some at 10 minute subs and I noticed that I took um, a lot more uh, hydrogen alpha subs than I did oxygen subs. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to take some 10 minute oxygen subs and I'm going to try and, and get in anywhere between 20 and 30 10 minute subs, hopefully, if the clouds cooperate with me. And I'm going to add that all to that data over those other four nights. Now, I don't really have 30 plus hours of data, unfortunately. A lot of that data was, was just garbage and trash, but a lot of it was also good. And I think that I have um, right around 10 hours or so of HA data. So if I could get another um, six or seven hours tonight of my O3 data, then I think I can combine that together to make a really nice um, you know, 15, 16 hour image capture. So Pickering's Triangle. Yeah, it, it lies right in between the eastern and western Vail Nebulas. It's all part of the Cygnus Loop supernova remnants and a few weeks ago i did do a video on capturing the bat nebula which is actually still part of this whole loop and this one actually looks bigger even though i'm using the exact same scope and, and uh, field of view but it, it you could it just looks more vast in, in when in the subs that i have so far so i'm going to go ahead and get my scope ready uh, it's almost dark. I got about an hour, hour and a half left, but I wanted to come out and, and get ready. Um, so here's my first night of trying to uh, dial in my mount and adjust the axis. Uh, I've sped up the footage here so that you could see, but you'll notice that it starts guiding relatively well, and then all kinds of crazy stuff starts happening. And so what I had to do, and I'm not showing here, is that I would stop this after a few minutes of guiding, and then I would make my adjustments mechanically, and then I would come back and I would try uh, again. And as you can see in the graph here on this sped up footage, it all of a sudden, you know, the deck axis just went crazy here. So here's also just a little bit of footage sped up of the first time that I managed to get everything stable. And I was at right around 0.55 total RMS when this occurred. Here's a great example of one of the O3 subs that came through. It was a 10 minute sub while I was adjusting my mount. Uh, I was also doing a pet curve, but 
as I said, it was more fun to do this while I could see the subs coming in. So this is what I first saw after I stacked all of my oxygen and hydrogen subs. Um, this is before cropping or anything. This is what I very first saw and um, I was impressed. I, I really like the way this looks. Um, the oxygen is just amazing and I, I'm not sure this almost reminds me of like a tornado uh, in space over here. And then the, the hydrogen was a little wild. Um, I've got some frames all over the place in this one. So I'm, I'm, unfortunately I'm gonna have to crop a lot of this down, which makes me a little sad, but um, it, it, it's still just beautiful. And I can't believe the detail that I managed to get in, in each of the hydrogen and, and oxygen masters. So I did make a big change to the image before I released it. So what I wanted to show you was is that when I first finished my image, I had these big stars and they looked a little wonky um, and I didn't like them. They kind of took away um, from the nebula for me when I was looking at it. And so what I did was is I went to the star mask that I created for this and as you could see the star mask here with the stars in it the big ones I reduced the size of these stars to these stars in this mask then after I combined the two and I came up with this image and the stars are still located exactly where they should be. I've just made them a, a lot smaller. And now it doesn't detract as much from the nebula. So it's a, uh, I don't know if you could call it accurate, but it's more pleasing to me not to see those big white stars in there. So last night turned out pretty good. We had some clouds come through, even though the app said that it was gonna be a clear night. But it, it did mess up a few of my subs, but overall I got the majority of subs that I needed to put together a pretty good image from the subs that I took a couple weeks ago. This project felt a little bit disjointed to me because it's, it's been all over the place um, and adding subs from last night and, this, and two weeks ago, um, it, it just doesn't seem like it's it wasn't cohesive like in other projects that I've been I've worked on in the past where you have like three or four nights of clear skies or maybe even just three nights but spanning a week and that's what you're doing you know every night and I've been jumping all over the place lately um, and I just wanted to not waste those good subs <clears throat> that I had from the time when I was calibrating the mount so um, it worked out really well though. I, I'm really pleased with this final image and I hope you will be too. If you like this type of content, please smash that like button and we'll see you in the next video.